You know, we just spent a lot of time Get getting you some horker and stew. Prank and not a little, a lot. I'll prank you, kid. Oh, like Gore, come back polish. here. We just got you that stew. I want to talk to you. I want to get to know you. <laughs> so does your pitch, boy. Didn't I tell you last time to be more specific? If you want someone's business, point out the stain on their chest plate or the blood on their boots. But you don't have any stains on your chest plate. <sighs> Go tend to the chickens, boy. You in need of a companion, friend? Well, then you're in luck. I do have rumor in. I reckon I've killed more men than there are minutes in a day. A murderer! Guards! Guards! You've killed more than 1,440 men? Lot few, huh? Hmm. At this rate, I guess I better change it to seconds then. <laughs> but who's counting? You, apparently. Where did you learn to fight? I got my start as a pit dog in the Imperial City Arena. Worked my way up to Gladiator before I got bored and quit. They say the best techniques are left by the survivors. With me gone, I guess everyone will have something to offer. But you weren't the Grand Champion. Only a coward quits before becoming Grand Champion. By Azura, by Azura, by Azura, you are no Grand Champion. Ooh, we're gonna call him out. Only a coward quits before becoming Grand Champion. Hey now, no need for that. I have my reasons, and they're as good as a bowl of horker stew. Well, why did you leave? Well, friend, it all comes down to who your opponent is. I'm square with killing men, but with a grand champion, ain't no more men to fight. So, they bring in beasts, minotaurs and things, who don't like it one bit. If a man chooses to enter the arena, it's what you call his prerogative. A beast ain't got no say in the matter. I kill horkers for food and bears for hides. I don't kill no animal for sport. You know, I... I like that. I respect that a lot. Why did you become an arena fighter? Why not? You need to get up more, friend. The arena is the most celebrated spectacle in all of Tamriel. To fight and die in the arena is a great honor. To fight and live, well, do that and you carve your name amongst the gods. The appetite for Bloodsport could not have been high after the war. You are mistaken. It couldn't have been higher. The people were hungry, not for blood, but for entertainment. Just go to YouTube. The arena, friend, was a welcome diversion from the throes of war. Because there's no death in the arena. Not to them. If you're a spectator, ain't nothing that happens in that pit real. It's all a game. They are betting, so... Well, describe the arena experience. The words won't do it justice. Not mine, anyway. But you can imagine, can't you? That moment when you stand behind the gate in a cold sweat. The air's so thick you can taste the blood. The crowd is buzzing. The flies are buzzing. Then they wheel up the iron. You hear this roar, so loud it rumbles in your chest. You don't know who they cheer for, what they cheer for. Victory, glory, or death. You could be a poet, but you could be a writer. That's the beauty of the arena, ain't it? Nothing's ever written, nothing's ever known. The grand champion can win a hundred matches 
and name a skeever as his next opponent, and the audience will still hold their breath. Unlike the stories, it's always a surprise when the hero wins, cause in the arena, the hero's allowed to fail. Well, that's all the questions I have about the arena for now. You ought to travel to Cyrodiil sometime, friend, and test your valor. Oh, I would love to. I mean, I've, I've been before. I've been a couple times to Bruma, to the Imperial City. Another time. What brought you to Skyrim? The Horkers, my friend. The Horkers. Oh boy, here I we go. I can't get enough of a good bowl of Horker stew. Fresh garlic, tomatoes... A sprinkle of lavender. Mm. <laughs> uh, it sounds delicious except for the horker part. Uh, could use some carrots, maybe some minced onion? You keep talking like that, and we'll need to get you an apron. And a chef hat. Also horkers. You know, I once made a meal for the Emperor of Tamriel. He was, in fact, a body double, and I did, in fact, kill him. But still. You're in the wrong place. Riverwood isn't exactly the horker capital of Skyrim. That isn't it. You see, I've tried stews of all different flavors from all over Tamriel. I've tried your venisons and your steaks. I've tried your bug meat, your horger pies, and tourist nuggets. Ugh. Some wood elf charlatan. Even tried to sell me what he called a wyvern steak, but it tasted like mountain goat. I've tried every meat from the Somerset Isles to the shores of Solstein, and ate nothing compared to a fresh pot of worker stew. But you know what I haven't tried? I haven't tried a dragon. And call me crazy. But I think I saw one fly this way not long ago. Dragons, horkers, it all pales in comparison to human flesh. Uh, about that. When I kill a dragon, their flesh tends to melt as I absorb them. <laughs> and this is supposed to be some sort of gift? The Nine can be cruel, my friend. Even when they bless... Tell me about it. What's on your mind? Dragons. Oh boy. I was wondering if you had any thoughts on how they should be prepared. Seems to me there's a lot more than just dragon steak. Well, they're lizards, no, so... I ain't no chef. But I was thinking, maybe it'd be best smoked into some sort of jerky. Okay, then. Farewell. You're new around here. So well, here's the thing. You. If dragons are all the children Akatosh, because Akatosh, you know, gave birth to Alduin and to Parthenex, but to all dragons, technically, you would just be eating, like, part of the fabric of reality. Wow, that's some really heavy armor you got there. If well, it was any you. bigger, it'd be wearing you. All right, well... You're going to keep staying with us. I'm keeping Rumor in for now. He's staying with us. He's joining us on, on the rest of our adventures for at least right now. As a High Elf, you must have an opinion on the Thalmor. I do. They're tall, punctual, and have good posture. Oh, all the things that I stand against. I guess that means you're not a Thalmor. True, I'm not very punctual. And I'm actually an inch shorter than the average High Elf. Wait, that came out wrong. Well, you know what I mean. Alright. Well, let's I'm go. right behind you. Is that As a Thalmor party I see? Some of the most intense wounds you can imagine, but nothing comes close to biting the inside of your lip. Or worse, biting your cheek? Biting your tongue? It's all terrible. Hello there. Move along. And who are you? I am a Thormor Justiciar on important business that you are interfering with. 
What are you doing in Skyrim? We're making sure your Emperor wasn't lying to his elven masters when he agreed the Empire would give up false gods and foolish beliefs. Mm-hmm. Now go away. I don't like your attitude. Need something? Need you to die. Oh! Oh, they're just running! They're not even waiting for me. Well, wow, alright, little rude. <laughs> Why does she not care? I can just see Yifri shaking her head Why don't you care? Walk away now. Do all you Thalmor have such high opinions of yourselves? Oh god, you're terrifying looking. That we are superior to men is an established fact. For example, take this belief in Talos, the ninth divine. <laughs> Certainly you don't believe such things. Or perhaps there's something you'd like to confess. I'd like to confess to a murder in about five seconds. And so you will die a heretic's death. It's fairly blasphemous. No! Also, all your friends are already dead. I don't know why you didn't care or notice. All right, that's one less thing to worry about. They did not care at all. Thank you, stranger. This is what I get for trying to please my audience. <laughs> what do you mean? What happened? It may not be apparent by my present choice in attire, but I'm a bard, and I take requests. The other day, someone asked me to play Age of Oppression, and the next thing I know, I'm part of this unholy quartet. You've met the other three members of the band, ugly, angry, and dead. <laughs> and who may I ask is the fourth member? Ah, that would be I, Daylin Okalo, of the old Bosmeri tribe. Of course, the other members just referred to me as Traitor. But, if you'll employ me as your companion, I swear on the woodland gods that I will not live up to that name. What skills do you have? I'm a jack of all trades, and a master of none. I'm good with a bow, but I can't say I'm great. I know a few spells, but I don't know enough. What I can provide is effort. Some will call it bravery, others will call it foolishness, but no one will ever say I didn't give you my all. Alright. Well, honestly, you're out here in the middle of nowhere. You got no gear. You got nothing. At the very least, come with us for a little bit. That way we can just get you somewhere safe. Well, were you just taking a request, or do you have an opinion on the war? Officially, I play what the patrons asked me to play. Unofficially, well, let's just say I'm not so good with the lyrics to certain songs. Aggression, oppression, who knows what these words really mean. Certainly not a poor, uneducated bard who only speaks in melody. Does that mean you support the Stormcloaks? It means I dislike the Thalmor. Anything to annoy them is fine by me. People who worship Talos seem to be high on their list. Well, why do you hate the Thalmor? Same reason I hate vegetables. It's in the blood. Amen. Well, follow me. I need your help. As you wish, this life is yours to command. Oh, I love that animation. <laughs> Rumor's like, hold up, excuse me, did you just invite someone else to join us? Yes. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, follow me. Let's go. Why did it say he wasn't following me? Are we heading out? Oh, hey, look, you got a... You got a bow now. I'd like to make a request. That sounds like a splendid idea, but first, we'll need to fetch my loot. And not the one the Thalmor confiscated. That was a shoddy replacement. You lost your loot? Yes, I'm rather partial to it. Unfortunately, the harlot left me for another set of hands. Which is another way of saying I gambled it away. Oh great, you're a gambling addict too? Why would you bet something so important to you? Why indeed? In life, I find the biggest risks net the biggest rewards. Besides, I still have an ace of my slave. And a regular loot won't suffice? She's the only one that puts up with my fingers. Truth be told, I'm barely half a bard without her. <laughs> well, where's the loot? I lost it to a bandit chief in a game of Iron Hearts. Clever, right? When you gamble with bandits, you don't have to win your things back. You just find the nearest Jarl and ask for the bounty. Do you know where this bandit chief is hiding out? That's the problem. 
Bandits are a nomadic lot. Although this one was an orc, so that should narrow our search. But rather than raid every bandit camp from here to High Rock, it's best to look in places where the mead flows and the people dance. Because if I know my loot, she always finds a merry home. It must be being married to an illusionist. It'd just be so hard to have a real conversation. Eyes on the hunt. <laughs> oh, we need to get you armor or something. Forests protect us. We gotta get you armor of some sort. Um, we'll stop in Falkreath. We'll stop in Falkreath. Get you at least some leather gear for now, and then we will head out to the Rift Watchtower. Well, don't you look fancy now? Look at you, looking spick and span, and ready for a life of adventure with us. I don't think Rumorin's happy. I think Rumorin's a little jealous. It's like, oh, we got this new adventurer and suddenly you're giving him gear? Well, he was nearly naked. With just the ragged clothes, he might as well be naked. So, you know what, Rumorin? I love your snarky I remarks. But I will wait. I'll wait to hear what you have to say come. about all this. I hear that orc. For Valenwood. Ah, uh, it's a different orc. <laughs> Everyone, just don't worry. We're just here for a loot. Always good to come out on the winning side. Probably wondering why there's all this wanton destruction. Literally just for the loot of a man that I just met. Oh, hello. Are you friendly? Have you seen uh, an orc around here? Greetings, Nord. Welcome to Rift Watchtower. Oh, thank you. Stay for a while. Have a drink, but before you leave, don't forget to check out the view from upstairs. It'll take your breath away. You're gonna push me off the tower, aren't you? You live here? Yes. I've carved out a little life for myself here. I provided shelter in exchange for food and supplies. And occasionally hunt game in the woods. But please, don't let me keep you. You must see the view. It's to die for. Take my breath away, die for. You seem awfully friendly. Why shouldn't I be? You Nords have been nothing but hospitable to us Dunmer since we arrived from Morrowind. Yeah, he's gonna kill now, me. please, feel free to visit the rooftop. And I'll join you shortly. Hmm? Okay, well, get ready to kill him. Everyone be ready for this. Hello? I do hope you're enjoying the party. Party? This is a party? I guess it is. I do hope you're enjoying the party. <laughs> Ah, another Nord. Bathroom must have sent you up here for me to maim you and feed your carcass to the wolves. Oh, is that so? Not to worry, friend. Old Dravos has no intention of turning anyone into meatloaf. For I serve not the Lord of Destruction, but Sanguine, the Prince of Debauchery. Uh, Bathroom is doing what? Why slaughtering Nords? At least, that's what he thinks he's doing. It fills him with an emotion that I can only describe as glee, because, well, that smile of his, it leaves me at a loss for words. And while he's full of glee now, imagine if he knew this was all a charade. Why, I dare say he'd be rather unfulfilled. What sort of charade are we talking about here? The kind where you have a seat, drink some wine, and enjoy the view. I like that charade. When you wish to leave, the invisibility potion on the table will allow you to slip past Bothru unnoticed. I like you. Or, you may seek to confront him and convince him of his folly. Although I would advise against it, as he's not the most pleasant person to talk to. Why is he trying to kill Nords? Why else? The man hates fun. It's a disease that inflicts a lot of folks who don't worship Daedra. To them, fun is like encountering a cave bear. It looks warm and fuzzy, but it'll rip your head off and use your neck as a waste bucket. 
to them, fun is like finding inventive ways to kill yourself. To that I say, death is a small price to pay. And why is that? Well, fun can expand to a great many things. Fun can be taking a bath in a cauldron of warm mead, Ooh. or eating sweet rolls off a tavern wench's bosom. I'm okay with this fun. Fun can be riding your horse down a mountain, or pushing it off one if you prefer. Fun can be killing seven bandits or corrupting one priest. Whatever it is, and whatever you're doing, the only question that's important is this. Are you having fun? <laughs> tell me the answer to that, and I'll tell you whether or not you should kill yourself. Jesus, dude. Uh, looks like you're having plenty of it, then. Uh... Just tell me where the beer is and get out of my way. There's wine on the table and on the floor. The beer is mostly in my stomach, but I'm sure you can find a few drops on someone's tongue. Alright. Well, what does the Prince of Debauchery want with Bathero? To make him a tool of merriment, of course. Think of us all as a part of a single drunken revelry. Each attendee contributes to the overall joy. When a person such as Bathero enters the room with this special brand of gloom, bitterness, and hate, it brings the entire party down. So why not make him a doorman? The one who stands outside the party and checks invitations and knows not what goes on inside. And for those who attend the party, what should we expect to find? Up here is the roof where happiness was invented. Where plates danced with spoons. Where the shine met the sun, and the light met the stars. And this is the roof where reservations choke and die. Where the scantily clad are merry and glad, and our throats burble with wine. Alright. You know, I, I like you. Happiness was invented here, I never would have guessed. Well, not literally, of course, but there was another time and another place very much like this, when mortals first discovered happiness. Alright. Go cause some trouble. Well, I'm just gonna take the potion, like you said. I'm going to sneak downstairs, like you said. And then we will give... the loot to Danalin. Where, where's Bathro? Where did he go? Alright. That was simple enough. There's a clause in my adventurer contract that says I should be treated to at least one meal a day plus dessert. Ooh, that's a good clause. I like that one. They say the best bards are born with a vampire's charm. I don't know if that's a compliment. I found your loot. That you did, and in good shape, all things considered. Granted, I don't know much about Dramora, but I've never pictured them to be musically inclined. In any case, should I play a song? It seems fitting, given where we are. We should leave before I get murdered. <laughs> Uh, you know what, sure. After all this build-up, it'd be funny if your singing was terrible. Well, the Thalmor certainly thought so. But I hope you'll have a slightly different reaction. <gasps> oh. Sing me Mogo's Mead. A fine request. I always knew you had good taste. Don't worry about me. I'm in the best shape of the Snowed's life. Ugh. I knew myself a maiden fair with emerald eyes and fire red hair. She owned a tavern by the sea and served one drinks of mellow wine. So, what's the plan? Drink ye merry, <laughs> drink ye thirsty, bring thy crew and revel freely. For on one thing we're all we agreed that Mogo made the, the finest mead. Mogo's mead, Mogo's mead, the only drink we'd ever need. Take a flask and take a seat, and drink thyself a sweetie treat. Okay. Not too shabby. It's fairly blasphemous for a Bosmer to chop wood. To that I say, don't ask for permission, ask for forgiveness. Alright. Is something wrong? Well, I have to admit I haven't been entirely honest with you. Oh? You helped me find my loot, and for that I'm eternally grateful. The problem is there seems to be something missing. Or, rather, someone. 
someone? That's right. And I don't mean a pet dragonfly or something like that. I mean a real person. Just a really tiny one. I feel like we jumped to the how can someone live inside your loot real quick. I feel like we definitely skipped something there. Because he didn't say someone inside his loot. You may not know this, but there's all sorts of weird creatures in Valenwood. Well, you call them weird. We just call them creatures. Ever read A Dance in Fire? She's sort of like the mimics that live in the trees. Except that she has legs and a brain. Okay... Do you have an idea of where she might be? My guess is the orc realized she was valuable and sold her off. But finding her should be easy. You want to sell a woodland creature? You find yourself a hag. How about I mark a couple spots on your map and we look there? Alright. Forests protect us. Let's take a look. Where are we off to? Search for Dandelion's missing companion at Cradle Stone Tower. Off we go. Is there going to be a hag up there? Oh, there's going to be a hag up there. I've got my little adventuring party to protect me. Hello! Is this what you want? And slash and stab. Stick with me and you'll uh, stay on the winning side. I promise you that. Oh! Ah, uh, hello. Oh my god. Well, one, you're not in the cage. Like you're supposed to be. Yes. Two, I can actually see you. Have you heard of the great apes of Valenwood? The last They're time I played this, have you didn't actually see someone. Yes. They also eat rodents. Oh, I was afraid you wouldn't see me. It's not easy being so small, you know. What manner of existence are you? I'm a tree sprite. What's a tree sprite? Well, um, think of us as tiny little spriggans with flesh. Or, if you prefer, tiny little people made of twigs. I don't know if I like either of those. That's not a very good explanation, is it? Not quite. What are you doing here? Is that where we are? In Skyrim. 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 Where is that in Valenwood? It's not. It's a se It's not a continent. It's a province. Like, this is all one continent. Tamriel is the continent. It is? Oh, no. It's all that Bard's fault. He's the one who brought me here. Yeah, I got him with me. You don't know how you got here? Bye, Ifrey. I must sound rather daft. I suppose I should start from the beginning. You see, like Spriggans, we're born from the trees, and in many ways, we're bound to them. Sadly, one day when I was out gathering food, a bolt of lightning fell from the sky and split my home in two. I'm sorry, fortunately you didn't die with it. Yes, but the forest was in flames. I couldn't outrun the fire, so I crawled into the roots of an old stump, deep underground, and cast a spell. It's an old one every sprite knows in case of a fire. It puts you to sleep until the day the trees grew back. Only, when I awoke, there wasn't a forest. There was a city. A city? Yes, a military outpost built by the Empire. And worse yet, one made of stone. By then, my life was fading. I had used up every last bit of magic left in that stump. I was scrambling into every room, looking for a piece of the forest. But the chairs, tables, and floors, almost all the wood came from faraway lands. What did you do? I nearly panicked. I mean... I thought I was going to die, but then, suddenly, I heard the most beautiful music fill the halls of the tavern. And there it was, sitting in the corner, was this Bosma, 
strumming a lute as red as the sunset in Woodhearth. What's so special about the lute? It came from the same wood as the forest. No, not just my forest, but my tree. I don't know how or why, but when I crawled inside it, I felt like myself again. And lucky for me, the bard who owned it was kind enough to let me stay. What happened to the bard? I mean, he's standing right behind me. That's the thing. He was a friendly bard, but you big people have your vices. It's even worse when you mix them together. One night, my friend got drunk and gambled away our loot, with me still inside. You don't think he did it on purpose, do you? No. No. I'm sure it was an accident. You're probably right. People do tend to forget about me. Sometimes that's good, and sometimes that's bad. This time, it was really, really bad. Yeah. Can I help you escape? That's a kind offer. Um, it really is. And normally I would love to be friends. Best friends. But I'm afraid I won't last very long without that loot. I'd be dead already, if not for the witch's magic. Danilin, get over here. Uh, what will you eat for that matter? What have you been eating? Yes, about that. I'd prefer not to say, as the whole thing is rather embarrassing. Let's just say that hag you killed will attract a lot of food. Oh, bugs. If you find my loot, I'd appreciate it if you brought it here. If you find that bard, I suppose you can bring him to... I got him, he's right here. Mithril, so this is where you've been hiding. Hiding? Hiding? Do you even remember what you did? My apologies, my lady. It was a joke, and in poor taste. The truth is, I made a mistake, and I'm here to make amends. Oh, well, I guess that makes it okay. Although, not really. <laughs> did you at least find the loot? I did, thanks to my faithful companion over here. You two are companions. I guess. Uh, that's right, at least until I gamble him away. That's not funny. You're always teasing people. I like Mithril. I'm sorry, it's just easy because you make such a big If this fuss. is a Hagraven nest, I think <sighs> you should take... More size jokes. A bigger lead than usual. No, I insist. Come on, Mithril. Well, um, in any case, Danen's always been picky about his partners, so I'm glad he's found one he likes. How do we get you inside the loot? The enchantment is tied to a song, but my voice is a little rusty. Could you, um, have our friend play the lute? I don't want to torture you with my singing. Don't be so hard on yourself. But if it helps, I'll play a song. What shall it be? Um, well, this is kind of embarrassing, but how about the spring song? It's the only one I remember the lyrics to. That's a good choice. Let's play. With autumn wind comes winter cold. With winter snow comes spring. The snow, the grass does sleep to soon awake again. <clears throat> oh, what? take your loop back out. <laughs> it's just standing there, like, huh? Oh, there he is. There he goes. Close enough. By Ifri, it worked. Was there ever any doubt? But now I feel sort of lonely. Oh. How will I talk to my new friend if I'm stuck inside here? 
Oh, I'm sure he'll have me bring you out if he wants to chat. So I guess we have a new member in our party. Hopefully you won't mind if I bring her along. She won't be much use in battle, or work as a pack mule, but that's why you have me. I'm glad you know. The bow, like any stringed instrument, requires deft fingers and a steady hand. Alright, I did notice it has me repeat some of the conversation topics we had previously. I don't know if that's going to be an issue for anything at all. Officially, I play what the patrons asked me to play. Unofficially, aggression, oppression, who knows what these words... It means I dislike... Same reason I hate vegetables. It's in the blood. I'm a jack of... What I can provide is effort. Some will call it bravery, others will call it foolishness, but no one will ever say I didn't give you my all. Eyes on the hunt. Okay, I know he has another quest, so maybe I just need to travel with him more. Maybe the more I travel with him, then he'll open up about everything else. Well, you're sticking with us for a little bit, buddy. My invisible magic sword is yours. We have a bard, we have a mage. It really is starting to feel like a D&D &D party.